Alright, welcome to another MP3 tutorial and uh, video format of Get More Out of College. This is Eliel Array here, and today we're going to be talking about the two female cycles in mammals, um, with an edge actually specifically in human beings, and that is overall what is generally generally called the menstrual cycle. But there are two cycles that go hand in hand overall menstrual cycle by itself as a term is a little misleading. Uh, you have the uh, ovarian cycle which has two phases, the follicular phase and luteal phase. Follicular phase obviously, you can already tell is when the follicle is being produced. Luteal phase is after it is produced. Proliferative phase is when the uh, works hand in hand when the follicle is being produced, the uh, lining for implantation is being created. And secretory phase is after that where it works hand in hand with the luteal phase after ovulation and that's when the endometrium lining is being degraded and that's towards the end of the cycle so follicular phase goes hand in hand with the proliferative phase and luteal phase goes hand in hand with the secretory phase so let's go straight to it let's see what's going on here in this menstrual cycle okay first thing the start of the menstrual cycle always starts when it should start from the hypothalamus or, or this, uh, the first step is the ovarian cycle which there are two phases follic follicular phase and luteal phase and so it starts when the hypothalamus secretes the hormone GnRH right here and GnRH is, re is a releasing hormone it's gone out a tropic releasing hormone and it is secreted by the hypothalamus it triggers the anterior pituitary gland here to release the hormones FSH and LH FSH and LH um, work hand in hand to stimulate follicular growth and you can see it here they start working together LH begins to rise a lot faster than FSH FSH is follicular stimulating hormone LH is luteinizing uh, hormone and you can also see at the bottom here we have three charts and the slides by the way were done by Dr. Leon Frederick and they're used with permission for non-commercial purposes so if you see here the ovarian cycle, it is growing, the growing follicle. When it matures, that's when we get a steep rise in FSH. And this usually happens at about 14 days into the ovarian cycle. 14 days average. And that's when this rises. This rise or this surge in FSH triggers ov ovulation. Ovulation is the release of the ovum from the ovary into the abdominal cavity that is ovulation. When ovulation occurs, this ruptures. Now the ruptured part becomes later on what we call a corpus luteum. But let's go back to the hormones. First, GnRH has been released from the hypothalamus. It's triggered the anterior pituitary to release FSH and LH. L FSH and LH are worked hand in hand in this follicular phase to mature, to grow and mature the follicle. LH has risen at about 14 days and the follicle is ruptured and ovulation has occurred. This ovum has been released to the abdominal cavity. Are we all good? Okay. And if you get lost, just replay the video all over again. Uh, next slide. So, after that, um, when this happens, um, the slow levels of uh, estradiol inhibit secretion of FSH which is still secreted but in low levels so right here while this is happening let's go here to this side where you see estradiol starts about the same time as LH and FSH but estradiol and just to, be, uh, just to clarify estrogen is the name of the family of the hormones and there's estradiol and estradiol. In this case, we're talking about estradiol that is produced during all the ovarian cycle. See, after that peak, that uh, this peak right here causes LH to surge when estradiol really rises in some kind of positive feedback mechanism. LH rises or ovulation occurs. LH drops. Progesterone now begins to rise. The steep rise of progesterone and estradiol. Um, I'm sorry, the steep rise of progesterone works as a negative feedback on the gonadotropic releasing hormone production. So the rise in progesterone shuts down the hypothalamus, 
from producing gonadotropic releasing hormone GnRH, which shuts down the anterior pituitary from producing FSH and LH. Okay, that is that rise right here. So as progesterone begins to rise, and then this ruptured um, ovary becomes a corpus lithium, and the corpus lithium begins to produce progesterone and estradiol which then now goes to our second section which would be the uh, secretory phase and the luteal phase and then again the luteal phase ends with the degeneration of the corpus luteum and this degeneration occurs if fertilization does not occur so if fertilization occurs progesterone and estradiol will continue to be released so right here where my mouse is that's if it does not occur then the corpus luteum degenerates and it degenerates and this production of um, progesterone and estradiol stops and you see it drop and of course if that stops that negative feedback that was holding GnRH will come off and GnRH will start releasing from we start being released from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary to release FSH and LH and the cycle starts all over again Okay, I have skipped a lot of parts for the sake of simplicity, but let me just run through it one more time. GnRH, at the start of the cycle, GnRH is secreted by the hypothalamus, stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release FSH and LH. FSH and LH work hand in hand to stimulate follicular growth until it matures, and then there's a, there's a surge or a rise in LH at about 14 days, and that triggers ovulation. When that triggers ovulation, the ovum is released from the ovary into the abdominal cavity and the uh, remaining part is called the corp becomes corpus lithium which starts producing progesterone and estradiol. Progesterone has negative in impact, impact or negative feedback ability on GnRH which shuts down FSH and LH and the reason why it shuts it down is because you just got done with your follicular phase if you still have those guys being produced the process will start all over again so you don't want that so it shuts it down if there is no implantation I'm sorry if there's no fertilization progesterone you know, the corpus lithium would wear off progesterone would drop and the negative feedback on the hypothalamus would be released and the cycle starts all over again now again even as I have not talked about the uh, the full part of the luteal phase and secretary phase and we'll do that here in just a few minutes. Okay, let's go to part two.